All right, folks. So what we have here is the Radio Oddity QT80. It is a 10 meter radio that can go up to 80 watts on AM and single sideband, and I'm assuming CW. It also does FM, but I think that's limited to around 50 watts. Anyhow, in a previous video, we did a modification on this, so it will transmit on 12 and 15 meter bands as well. So that makes it a tri-band radio. I'll have a link below. You can check these out if you want at Radio Oddity, and if you like it, you can get one. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by Radio Oddity, and they did offer me this radio for review. They sent it to me free for the review, as a matter of fact. So if you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. So what we're going to do today is we are going to connect this thing up to a spectrum analyzer, and we are going to test its output spectral purity specifically looking for out-of-band harmonics, which is a no-no in amateur radio. And what the requirement is, is that any spurious emissions or harmonic emissions need to be 43 dB below the fundamental. So we're going to test that out. Let me go ahead and turn this baby on. And for the test, we are actually going to do the test in continuous wave CW Morse code. It is capable of doing that. That will give us a nice strong carrier signal to measure against. And uh, we're going to do all three bands. Take your projects to the next level with PCBWay.com. Enjoy top quality PCB manufacturing and assembly at competitive prices with fast turnaround times and global shipping you can count on. Be part of the PCBWay.com 7th Project Design Contest, where open source innovation thrives and electronics communities grow. Join the movement and spark your creativity. From prototypes to full production, PCBWay.com has you covered. Visit PCBWay.com today and make your ideas a reality. We're going to use this contraption to attenuate our signal so it's safe to feed into our spectrum analyzer. We're going to use what I call the big ass attenuator. This is a 100 watt attenuator that pulls your signal down 40 dB. Followed by this medium sized attenuator. This is a 10 watt attenuator. It takes another 10 dB down. And then we got the teeny tiny attenuator which will take us down another. So we are going to use 60 dB of attenuation for this. Last, we're going to feed our signal into a tiny SA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer, and we're going to measure with this. But don't worry, you won't have to look at this screen because I have computer control software that will allow us to look at this on the screen and make it nice and easy to read. Let me get that set up, and we'll begin testing. Okay, at a glance, we are going to squirt a signal out of the back of the radio into this three-foot piece of RG8X coaxial cable that coils all around and around. And it goes into the big ass attenuator, and then it goes through our attenuation chain into the tiny SA, just in case you were wondering. We'll walk through the configuration on the tiny SA so you can play along at home if you should desire. The power output on this radio, and I don't have it on, let me see if I can turn it on real quick. And bring it up here, and if I mess with this, you can see that it goes up to 45, and so that is an index scale. So today we are going to test at 45, we are going to test at 30, and then we are going to come down and we are going to test at 15. So that will give us three different power levels on three different bands. Silly me, I had the coaxial cable going into the wrong port on the tiny SA Ultra, so even a professional expert like me might make a mistake once in a while. Not often, just once in a while. All right, we are set up. We are going to be transmitting on 28.1 CW carrier power setting of 15, whatever that means. And we're keying up and we're here in our carrier. And we're right around 37 and a little bit DBM. 37 is about 5 watts. And uh, we're clean on that signal. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to go ahead and I want to turn it up to 30. And here we are at 30. Let's go ahead and key up. Now, sometimes you'll see some spikes on the tiny SA, but that's really just its internal mixing and sorting itself out. You can see as that dies down, our signal is clean and the spikes adjacent to our signal are more than 43 dB below the fundamental frequency. So we are good to go there. Let's go ahead and turn this baby up to full power, which is a 45 on our index scale. Let's go ahead and key up and see what we get. And 
And there we go. And it looks like we're sorting out around 36.8 dBm. And uh, we're clean there as well. All right, what I want to do now is I'm going to change bands on this thing. So let me go ahead and do that. We are going to go to a frequency, according to my notes, of 24.9, which is on the 12 meter band. So let me get that set up and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we are tuned into 24.9 megahertz. I've reconfigured the tiny SA uh, because we're on a different frequency and I want to make sure that we do everything by the book. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to key up at 15 on the power scale. And uh, we're looking good. I, th I think uh, I think we got a pass there. Now what I want to do is I want to adjust the power scale to go up to 30 so we can do that test. Now we are keying up to see what we get. And I think we're good there as well. Let's go up to 45. I keep wanting to say 60, but it's 45 on the power scale. Now we're keying up and let's see what we see. Uh, we got a little couple points there, but they're going to go away. And I think we're good to go there as well. I'm going to go ahead and reconfigure everything. So now we can do the 15 meter band, which is going to be 21.1 megahertz. Okay, so what we have is we are on 21.1 megahertz and we are at power level 15 and we are keying up. And it looks good to me. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power setting to 30 like we talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up. And we are good. And next thing we're going to go turn our power up to 45 and we're going to key up one more time. At number two is making me a little nervous, but uh, it should be fine. And we're good to go there as well. So far, I'm really digging this radio. It's about 300 bucks, and that might be expensive if you look at it as a 10 meter radio. But with the modifications we did in the other video, and I'll link below, you can make it a three band radio, 10, 12, and 15. Uh, it's nice and clean, which I like, and it's relatively high power. Um, so it would be pretty good for some portable type stuff. Anyhow, that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.